and thank you for clicking on this video. So Christmas is just around the corner. No, it's not. It's technically summer. However, I'll tell you what's around the corner. It's beauty advent calendars. So we've already been getting information about the product lineup and release dates of various beauty advent calendars. And normally around this time, we start seeing videos about people talking about whether this or that advent calendar is worth it, whether it's a good deal and so on. Most of you who've already seen some of my previous videos know that last year I bought the Liberty London Beauty Advent Calendar. So I decided to film a video from the perspective of someone who's already bought and used a Beauty Advent Calendar to talk about whether it was worth it. First, let's define what I consider to be a Beauty Advent Calendar that was worth it. To me, that's a calendar that contained lots of products that I ended up liking. Also, the amount of product in it should be enough to have lasted me a long time because normally beauty advent calendars are quite pricey. And also, that would be a calendar that didn't contain many products that I didn't like or didn't use. So, let's see. Here is the calendar. It's quite a big bulky box and the packaging is gorgeous. However, a word to the wise, if you think you're going to use this packaging or put it on your vanity or anything like that, that's not going to happen. It's just too big and bulky and it's not convenient. So the only reason why I haven't thrown it out yet is, well, first of all, at some point uh, early in the year, I decided that I'm going to film this video and also I might give it to my little knees to play with we'll see but yeah it's it's something that's going to go in the rubbish bin eventually so let's go one by one in the order of the drawers the first drawer contains two products uh, the Aveda cherry almond softening shampoo and conditioner they're empty by the way uh, I use them up they're amazing and I really didn't expect to like a softening shampoo uh, and a softening condi conditioner that much but they made my hair feel really hydrated and voluminous and um, uh, they also smell gorgeous. So these two are definitely a couple of products that I would repurchase. Number two is another gorgeous product, that's the Herbivore Botanicals Orchid Youth, Youth Preserving Facial Oil. It smelled gorgeous and I loved the effect on my skin and I would definitely repurchase this one as well. And by the way, this is also used up. Number three is a fragrance, it's uh, by Willem Perfumery Peony Couture Eau de Parfum. And, uh, yeah, it's a floral smell. I liked it. Um, I wouldn't repurchase it necessarily, but I did enjoy using it and it's also used up. Number four, also a product that I used up, it's the Dermalogica Intensive Eye Repair. It's an eye cream. You can see that I've cut it open, used it up. Um, I did not enjoy this one. Uh, it didn't do anything much or I don't know if it, if it did anything at all. Um, it, it certainly didn't have any bad effect on my skin, but still I, I wouldn't repurchase this one. Number five is a product that I haven't opened yet. I haven't started using it. Um, it's the, the Hourglass Cosmetics Veil Translucent Setting Powder in a travel size and I just haven't got around to it yet. It's a powder though, I'm sure it can wait. Number six is another item that I used up completely. It's the Aurelia, Aurelia, don't know how to pronounce this. It's a botanical cream deodorant, a very clean, aluminium free, all that jazz. It, it smells really nice, but here's what happened. So it didn't work for me. <laughs> I'm quite a sweaty person and um, I'm probably also a smelly person. I remember that when I was a teenager that used to bother me, my BO used to bother me and then with, with time I thought that just you know my 
hormones had changed and uh, now I don't smell anymore but after starting using this product I realized that no I still stink it's just that the deodorants that I'd been using had evolved through the years and um, they were doing a really great job but this one wasn't just <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't enough for me. If I would just stay home and um, do some light exercise, it was okay for, for that. But it wasn't okay for a busy day at the office, for example, because at some point I just started sensing uh, some very <laughs> unpleasant odors and it was me. So, sorry, just not good enough. Number seven. Number seven is another one that I liked. It's the Lixi Skin Universal Emulsion. It's like a moisturizer, really liked it. It feels really nice on the skin. So yeah, I might repurchase it. Number eight. Number eight is the Davinus Nunu Hair Mask. It was a really nice hair mask, really nourishing, and I would repurchase that as well. Number nine, another couple of empties, the Marlin and Gertz Grapefruit Face Cleanser and Vitamin E Face Moisturizer. Both were really nice. I would consider purchasing again. Uh, my only problem with these products, and particularly with the moisturizer, is that in this kind of packaging, it's really, really hard to... So yeah, I, will, I was saying that in this type of packaging, it's really hard to squeeze product out, um, especially the moisturizer, because the, the cleanser is more liquidy, but the moisturizer was really hard to, to squeeze out, especially when there wasn't a lot of product left um, so I ended up <laughs> digging it out with a with cotton bud. Number 10 is a product that I'm still using. I still haven't used it up. It's the Byredo... Um, come on, focus. Yeah. Rinse-free hand wash. Look, it's, it's really, really amazing. It smells nice. It's a sanitizer, but it's also like a hand cream so it doesn't dry out the hands at all and I really love it I might repurchase it at some point uh, the only thing is that it's so expensive that I, I really don't want to put it in my handbag because you know when, when you're out with someone and um, uh, you take out your sanitizer and they ask you, oh, can I use it? This one is so expensive that I would probably be like, careful not to squeeze too much out. So what I'm doing is, uh, it's it's on my vanity and it's part of my beauty ritual. So for example, if I'm about to apply some product to my face, but I've touched my phone, I would <laughs> use this one. Or when I've touched too many products and I just want to refresh my hands before applying a product to my face. And um, I love it. I would repurchase it. Number 11 is another product that I'm still using. It's the Trish McAvoy Beauty Booster Lip and Cheek Balm in the shape Plum. I basically never use it on my cheeks. It's just a lip product for me and I really like it. And um, I love how it applies on the lips. It's long lasting and even if you eat or drink, it, it fades beautifully. It still fades, but it leaves the most beautiful color even if you've been eating. Number 12 is the Susanne Kaufman Oil Bath for the Senses. I didn't like this one. I found the, the scent to be too subtle and it just didn't do anything for me. So that's a pass, I wouldn't repurchase it. Number 13 is another product that I haven't started using yet. It's the Frank Body Lip Balm. Um, I, I have another lip balm open at the moment, so uh, this one is still waiting its turn. Number 14, another product that I used up completely is the Dr. C Back Pure Vitamin C Powder Cream. It's basically a powder, it was contained in, in two small containers, they looked like test tubes. Um, I can't find them uh, right now, but I used them up both 
and I didn't like this one either. It was messy, you're supposed to mix it in with your moisturizer or apply directly to the skin, but it was just a mess, it was inconvenient and I didn't see much of a result, so uh, that's definitely a pass, I would not repurchase this. Number 15, another product that I used up completely, it's the Aromatherapy Associates De-Stress Muscle Gel. I actually ended up repurchasing this, or it's not exactly a repurchase because I could choose a gift with purchase uh, from uh, Space and K, and I did choose this one, only in a bigger size. So this is a muscle gel, which means that if you have sore muscles or an achy back or something like that, you can use this to massage yourself, or you can ask someone to massage you with it. 16 is a product that I'm still using, it's the Surat Lid Lacquer in the shade Komugi. I've mentioned it before, I've even hit pan on it. It's a nice product, I enjoy using it, I, I would probably not repurchase it after I've used it up, but I do think I'll use it up. Number 17 is the Ren Clean Skincare Ever Calm Overnight Recovery Balm. I've used this up. It has a balm-like consistency, but when you warm it up between your fingers, it turns into an oil. It was nice for winter, I liked using it. Not so much that I would repurchase it, but it was still nice. And if I had it now, I would probably use it again. Number 18 is the Bobbi Brown Smokey Eye Mascara in black. I still haven't started using this one because I like to have one mascara open at a time. This one is waiting its turn. I'll probably start using it next month when I've used up my Glossier Mascara. Number 19 was the Lazy Girl Dry Shampoo. Empty. I did use it up I didn't enjoy it. I mean, the smell was nice, but I didn't think it did anything for my hair, so that's a product that I would not repurchase. Number 20 was the Oma Ravitsa Queen of Hungary Mist. This is the best face mist that I've ever used, completely empty. <laughs> Uh, it smells divine. I actually used up another bottle after this one. So yeah, this is something that I will definitely keep buying again and again. It's fantastic. The smell is lovely. It's very refreshing. The mist is very, very fine. So it doesn't leave drops or mess up your makeup. 21 is something that I haven't kept the packaging for. It was a set of three hydrating facial sheet masks. Even I wouldn't pile up rubbish for so long. Number 22, another brand new unopened one. It's the NARS Orgasm Blusher and Laguna Bronzer Duo. Still haven't got round to those. Number 23 is another product that I'm still using. I actually opened it last week. It's the Votary Super Seed Facial Oil. It's nice. I'm still using it. I can't say if I would buy it again or not. Number 24 is another thing that I don't have the packaging for here, although I've used it up. It's the Diptyque Bay scented candle. The glass is in our bathroom. I use it as a container for our toothbrushes. It's a nice candle. It's not my favorite Diptyque candle. My favorite Diptyque candle so far is the Figuier candle because I'm obsessed with figs and I'm not using this word lightly. It's a nice product that I probably wouldn't mind using again, but wouldn't repurchase. And finally, number 25 was Tonka 25 Eau de Parfum by Le Labo, or Les Labo as they're called. This one was nice. It's a unisex kind of smell, so to me it smells like a handsome young man. I do enjoy the smell of a handsome young man, although I don't necessarily want to smell like one. I actually enjoyed using it. I think it's definitely a wintry kind of smell. Yeah, it's nice. I wouldn't repurchase it. So, out of the 25 drawers, I have seven drawers with products that I would repurchase and some of them I already have repurchased. I have five drawers of products that I liked using but wouldn't necessarily buy and use again. I also have five drawers of products that I didn't like. Fortunately, none of them caused any kind of bad reaction or anything. Uh, I've actually used them all up, but I just 
didn't like them. I have four drawers of products that I'm still using and four drawers of products that I haven't started using yet. And the ones that I haven't started using yet are makeup products and it just has to do with the fact that I want to use up all of my existing makeup and so on. So I'm pacing myself, trying not to have too many products open at the same time. So to sum up, the Liberty London Beauty Advent Calendar was definitely worth it for me. It was worth it because I found quite a few products that I love that I would buy again. I also got the chance to try a large number of products that I've been interested in trying. I'm still using some of the products so it contains a good amount of product and a good number of products in it. Well, they all contain 25 products give or take. It was a good purchase. Would I buy this year's Liberty London Beauty Advent Calendar? Probably not. I have quite a lot of skincare products at the moment. Um, I'm not missing anything and those of you who've been watching my videos know about my makeup situation so I wouldn't want to buy many new products at the moment. I'll pass this year but I still think that it's a great beauty advent calendar. Based on my experience I would recommend that you buy a beauty advent calendar. It doesn't have to be the Liberty one, just you know one that, that you like. If you need to replenish your skincare or makeup inventory it's a good way to do it because you'll be getting a lot of products that would normally cost more if you bought them individually so that's one reason to buy a beauty advent calendar another one would be if you like me are curious to try new products a beauty advent calendar is great for that the other reason to buy a beauty advent calendar would be if you have someone to share it with because they normally contain quite a big number of products so you might not be interested in all of them but if you have a friend or a relative or a significant other that would be interested in trying or using the products that you don't want it's a good deal three reasons why you shouldn't buy a beauty advent calendar would be number one if you already have a lot of product laying around and you want to use up your inventory don't buy a beauty advent calendar it's only going to, to make it worse for you because it contains a lot of products it's only a good deal if you're going to use and use up all of the products in it. If you're just going to buy it and you know wait for the products to expire and never touch them or if you're not going to use at least the majority of the products in the beauty advent calendar then it's not a good deal and it's not worth it. Another reason why you should not buy a beauty advent calendar is if you already have your favorites, your preferences and you know what you like in each category and you're not interested in trying out new things then why buy a beauty advent calendar? Just stick to the things that you like and the things that you know work for you. And reason number three why you should probably not buy a beauty advent calendar or why buying a beauty advent calendar is maybe not the best idea in your specific circumstances is if you have very sensitive skin or very oily skin or very dry skin and you know that a lot of products don't work for you for that reason maybe just don't buy a beauty advent calendar because most of the skincare products in any beauty advent calendar are meant for a general <laughs> audience they're not specifically selected to suit special needs when it comes to type of skin and so on so that was my experience with last year's Liberty London Beauty Advent Calendar it's a positive one I hope this video will help you decide on whether to buy a beauty advent calendar or not thank you so much for staying till the end enjoy wearing your makeup enjoy living your life see you soon bye